the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to the learning session today. I'm your teacher, Mr. Ndifon Silas, and I'll be taking you through the lesson of today. So I expect you to be well seated as we go through the lesson. And this lesson, as we know, is for all from three students who are offering law and government, all commercial students. Now let's look at our lesson and we start with our assignment, the correction of our assignment that was given in the previous lesson. And with our assignment, we have a question which we expect you to have answered at home. And this one is just uh, a reminder. Now the question goes thus. State the law that brought forth the present labor legislation applicable in Cameroon. The lesson, the previous lesson was talking about labor legislation in Cameroon. And if you went through that lesson, I expect you to be able to state the law that brought forth that labor legislation. And if you have it right, the answer is law number 92 slash 007 of 14 August 1992, which has made available the labor code that is being applicable in Cameroon today. So we say it is law number 92 slash 007 of 14 August 1992, which has made available the labor code that is being applicable in Cameroon today. We are going to see the title of our lesson today. We are looking at level uh, lesson four. We've seen level one, two, three, and now it's lesson four. And the title of the lesson is Emp Enterprise Head. So we'll be looking at Enterprise Head. And Enterprise Head, look at the picture on the board. You see this lady, she's looking gorgeous, she's looking well dressed. She's an enterprise head. You see, she's looking smart and even holding a book to show that she has a lot of things to take care of in her enterprise. That said, let's look at our lesson plan for today. First, we'll be looking at the objectives of our lesson, after which we'll look at the previous knowledge, what we expect to know from the previous lesson, and then we'll get to the discovery of the lesson. And then equally, we'll look at the learning activity of the day. And then at the end, we'll obviously give you application exercises, which we expect you to be able to answer, having gone through the lesson. And at the tail end of it all, we'll give you an assignment, which you're going to take home. And then you use it to revise the lesson at home. That said, on our objectives, we expect you, having gone through this lesson, to be able to define an enterprise. So if you go through this lesson at the end, you should be able to define an enterprise. And having defined an enterprise, we expect you equally to be able to define an enterprise head or a manager. Because we are talking here of an enterprise head. Now, if we understand what is an enterprise, then it will be easier for us to understand an enterprise head or a manager. Equally, through the lesson, we should be able to state and explain the powers of the enterprise head. What are the various powers of the enterprise head? We are going to see them as we go through the lesson. And at the end of the lesson, I expect you to be able to state the powers of the enterprise head. Good. Now, from our previous knowledge, we expect you, having gone through the previous lesson, to, be, to know the importance of labor legislation. 
you're supposed to know the importance of labor legislation, are equally to state the various documents that have been used to regulate labor relationships over time in Cameroon. So from our previous lesson, you should be able to know the importance of labor legis legislation and to be able to state the various documents that have been used to regulate labor relationship over time in Cameroon. That said, let's go to discovery of our lesson of today. And in that case, it is a question that the answer to the question will give us an opening into the lesson of today. Remember, we are, the title of the lesson is Enterprise Head. And the question goes thus. Miss Kara owns a designing house where she employs workers, supervises them, and controls all work done in the enterprise or company. How can we refer to her? Remember, we are talking about Miss Kara, and we say she owns a designing house where she employs workers, supervises the workers, and controls all the work that is being done in the company. So, how do we refer to her? And if we want to refer to Madame Kara, we refer to her as an enterprise head. Look at this image on the board. You see an image showing enterprise head. You see how they're looking. You see they look smart, first of all. And it shows they have to be, they know what they're doing with enterprises. So they've actually come to create an enterprise and they head the enterprises. The answer is an enterprise head or an entrepreneur. So Madam Kara is being referred to as an enterprise head or an entrepreneur. Now, let's look at the introduction of our lesson today. We'll start by seeing what is an enterprise. And we say what? An enterprise is a company or an organization that deals in the production and transformation. That is in the, with the production and transformation of goods and services. So an enterprise is an establishment that deals with the production of goods and services and transformation. So an enterprise can either be created by an individual or a group of individuals. And when you create an enterprise and you're heading that enterprise, you're being referred to as an enterprise head. So if you're being asked what is an enterprise, you should be able to say it is an, a company or an organization that deals with production of goods, transformation of goods and services. That said, having seen what, is a, what an enterprise is, now let's look at an enterprise head. And we say an enterprise head is what? Is the coordinator of an organization's activities. He also oversees the implementations and organization of policies in the company. So we're talking about Madame Kara as an enterprise head. We see if she, as an enterprise head, she's supposed to manage the affairs of the company. She's supposed to oversee and implement the organization or the policies of the enterprise. So that is an enterprise head. Looking at the picture, you see a, an image here of an enterprise head. She's addressing probably the workers and there we are looking at the powers of the enterprise head. What are the various powers of the enterprise head? And the first one we say the management power. How does the enterprise head manage the company? Let's look at that detailly. The first way of managing the company or the way he manifests his power of management is by maintaining a good working environment. So as an as a managed uh, enterprise head, you're supposed to maintain a good working environment for the company. You're supposed to make the environment quite conducive for workers. Because as we understand where the environment is conducive, the workers are more comfortable to do the tasks that has been accorded to them. So as a good enterprise head, you're supposed to ensure or you're supposed to maintain a good working environment for your workers. And equally, as an enterprise head, you're supposed to motivate your workers. How do you motivate your workers? You can motivate them through speech, through verbal motivation. You can give them uh, prims. It could be in the form of money or whatever way, but you need to motivate your workers so that they can be able to carry out the task in a more relaxed and comfortable manner. Equally, it is being manifested through keeping the workers informed. 
How do you keep your workers informed in the situation where there are changes, maybe in the rules of the company, or some changes have been made? You're supposed to inform the workers of the changes, such that no workers should like uh, go against uh, or do something that has been changed without his knowledge. So you're supposed to keep them informed so that they should be quite aware of everything that is going on in the company. And equally, as an enterprise head, you're supposed to respect the law. Of course, we have the law that regulates labor relationship in Cameroon. And as we saw in our question, the first question of our, our assignment, we say it's law number 92 slash 007 of 14 of August 1992. That brings the law that is being applicable today in Cameroon in labor matters. So as an enterprise head, you're supposed to respect the law, which means you're not supposed to go against the law. You're supposed to do just what the law prescribes. Equally, as an enterprise head, you're supposed to respect the terms of contract of employment. Getting into a contract of employment, you sign what we call an uh, employment contract. And in that contract, there are terms and conditions that are supposed to be respected. So as an enterprise head, you're supposed to respect those the terms of the contract of employment. Equally, as an enterprise head, you must have a good human relationship. Of course, as an enterprise head, you're meeting with people from day to day. Your workers, be them customers that come to the office or to the enterprise, you're supposed to maintain a good working relationship or a good relationship with them interact well with them and if they ask questions you should be able to answer them in ways that they will feel comfortable and they will have confidence in the enterprise so as a an enterprise head you're supposed to have a good human relationship and having seen the management power of the enterprise head now let's look at the disciplinary power of the enterprise head of course we know in every institution that's supposed to be disciplined without which there will be a lot of chaos and things will not go well same with the enterprise we have the enterprise head who possesses disciplinary powers and how is this manifested we see from the image on the board we see the enterprise head is kind of cautioning the worker on how to or what to do in the company so whatever the case the enterprise head has disciplinary powers and he manifests them in various ways. How does he manifest the powers? First, we say, in the case of, so di uh, by disciplinary powers, we are just talking here about the punitive measures that the head of enterprise can inflict on the workers in the case of misconduct. So when the workers goes against the rules of the company, the um, enterprise head has to inflict or has to use some of his powers, disciplinary powers, to bring them back to order. And this is manifested in several ways. We have suspension of the worker for some working days with loss of wages. So in a case where the worker has acted in a way that is not acceptable by the rules of the company, the enterprise head can suspend the worker for some working days. And we are made to understand that by the working days, it should not exceed eight days. So it falls in line with one of the conditions. The working days of suspension should not exceed eight days. If it exceeds eight days, that would be considered as dismissal. So the suspension should not go above eight days. And equally, the labor inspector should be informed in writing of the suspension, should be informed in writing of the suspension and equally, the worker who has been suspended should equally be informed with a written notice, explaining in the notice why he or she has been suspended. Now, he can, the enterprise head can equally use blame or written warning. This comprises of what? Putting down a warning addressed to the worker to caution him on his actions which might have been against the rules and regulations of the company. So this is done through a blame or a written warning. Equally, we have a verbal warning. Away from a written warning, the enterprise head can resort to using a verbal warning. 
where he will speak with the worker and tell him to be conscious about some situations or some acts he has committed in the enterprise. Equally, we have termination of the contract of employment with payment of benefits as one of the manifestations of the uh, disciplinary powers of the enter enterprise head. So in a case of misconduct, the enterprise head can equally decide to terminate the contract of employment of the worker with benefits. Equally, we have a dismissal of the worker with loss of benefits in situation if the situation is very serious. Thus, we are saying in a situation where the misconduct is very serious, the enterprise head can resort to dismissing the worker directly. And however, dismissal has rules that it has to follow. So you go through the proper means of dismissing or dismissing the worker. Equally, we have reduction of rank or demotion. In a case where the worker has committed an act against a company or which is not favorable to the or beneficial to the company, the enterprise head can resort to reducing the rank where you'll be moved from a higher rank to probably a lower rank. It is equally referred to as demotion, which means you can be demoted. So either we could resort to reduction of your rank or what is known as demotion. You're being demoted to a lower rank as a means of as a means of discipline. So the enterprise head, we have seen the disciplinary measures that the enterprise head can use in a company to ensure that discipline is being maintained. Having seen the disciplinary measures or the disciplinary powers of the enterprise head, now we are looking at the regulatory powers of the enterprise head. And by regulatory powers, what do we mean? This has to do with the internal rules and regulations of the company or the internal rules and regulations that are governing the activities of the enterprise. And this has to do with issues like a register or where you register when you come to work, that's your arrival and your departure. It can equally do with the dressing code in the company where you're supposed to wear probably protective gear, could be made up of helmet or your hand gloves or whatever it is. And we are made to understand that the regulatory powers of the enterprise head are being governed by law number 007 slash MILS slash decree of 19 of June 1968. Take note of this law. We say it's law number 007 slash MILS slash decree of 19 of June 1968. It governs the regulatory powers of the enterprise head. Now, look at the image on the board. Let me zoom in so that you can see it clearly. You see, this is a worker in the enterprise. You see the worker is dressed according to the code of the enterprise, where you have a helmet to protect him from any form of head injury, or you have the hand gloves to protect your hands. We have the boots to protect your feet against falling objects. And then we have, of course, the glasses which are meant to protect your eyes. And then we have the construction vest, which are, is equally meant to identify the workers in the company. And then we have the cones for direction and all of that. So these are the various things that are being used in the enterprise. And the, the enterprise head is supposed to ensure that the worker uses them as they're supposed to be used. Now we've gone through the lesson. I want to expect that you understood the lesson properly, but let's just take over the powers again of the enterprise head for better understanding. And remember the last one we saw was regulatory powers, which we said has to do with or concerns the internal rules and regulations governing the activities of the enterprise. And we made mention of the law that is governing the regulatory powers of the 
enterprise head and we say it's law number 007 slash MILS slash decree of 19 of June 1968. And we say the regulatory powers of the enterprise head are being governed by this law. Equally away from the regulatory powers, we saw the we saw the disciplinary powers of the enterprise head. And by disciplinary powers, we said it is, or these are the punitive measures that an enterprise head uses to inflict on workers to ensure that there is discipline, there is orderliness in cases of gross misconduct. So in the cases of gross misconduct, how does the enterprise handle them? What are the measures he's supposed to put in place to ensure that the, it is being, or the acts committed against the company are not more, or are not committed again? There's many of them. I would say the first one is suspension of the worker for working days. And we say the working days are not supposed to be more than eight. They are supposed to be at most eight working days, which is, even supp which is equally supposed to be accompanied with a written document written to the inspector, to the labor inspectorate, to inform them of the suspension of the worker. And equally, there has to be a written document to the worker to inform the worker of his suspension and the reason for his suspension. Away from suspension, we have a blame or written warning, which the enterprise head can equally use to ensure discipline in the company. This can be a written warning that is being addressed to the worker to dissuade him from committing acts of misconduct. Now, we equally have verbal warning. So if the, the, the enterprise head can equally use verbal warning as a means of ensuring discipline in the company. So where he uses, he, he uses the voice to caution the worker. And equally, he can resort to termination of the contract of employment in serious cases. Where the case is very serious, the enterprise head can resort to terminating the contract of employment with payment of benefits, of course. And then we equally have dismissal of the worker with loss of benefits in serious situations, which means in a situation where it's quite serious, the enterprise head can resort to automatic dismissal of the worker. And this dismissal is accompanied with loss of benefits. And then lastly, we have the reduction of the rank of the worker, where the worker can be demoted from a higher rank to a lower rank as a means of punishment or discipline. So we've seen the disciplinary power Let's look at the very first one we saw, the management power of the enterprise head. And we say with the management power, the enterprise head is supposed is manifested through maintaining a good working environment with the workers. And this ensures that the, the, manage, the enterprise head should make the working environment quite conducive for the workers so that they will carry their task effectively and in a very relaxed manner. And then it has to equally motivate them. Talk of motivation of the workers, which we made mention of the fact that it could be financial motivation, could be verbal motivation, or whatever way the, the enterprise head deems necessary to motivate the workers. And then we equally have to understand that the enterprise head has to keep the workers informed of any changes in the enterprise. There could be changes in the enterprise and the workers need to be informed about the changes whatsoever they may be. And then we have um, respect of the law and the law here we're referring to the labor code where we expect the enterprise head to respect the terms of the labor code and apply them in his enterprise effectively. And we equally have respect of terms of contract of employment because when you're getting into an employment you go through a contract of employment which has to do with terms and conditions which should be 
respected. So as an enterprise head, is expected to respect the terms of contracts of employment. And then he must have a good working or a good human relationship with the workers and with customers or whosoever comes into the company in need of a good or a service. Having seen that, we've seen the various powers of the employer, the management power, the disciplinary power and regulatory power. Having gone through that, we have some questions, exercises which we expect you haven't gone through the lesson to be able to answer them effectively. And the first one says, state the three powers or state the three powers of an enterprise head. You're expected to state the three powers of an enterprise head. And if you were attentive through the lesson, that should not be an issue at all. So if you have any right, the three powers of an enterprise head, the answer we have, the first one is management power of the enterprise head. And then the second one, we have the disciplinary power of the enterprise head. And the third one, we have the regulatory power of the enterprise head. We've seen all of them detailedly and you should be able to understand them. Here you were expecting just to state. There might be circumstances where they expect you to state and explain. Having gone through the lesson, I expect you to be able to explain them. Now, our next question says, ensuring respect of the law by workers and respect of the terms of contract of employment form part of which power of the enterprise head? We've gone through the powers of the enterprise head and now we are stating some of them and we say ensuring respect of the law. We saw them and then we equally have respect of the terms of contract of employment and we are saying it forms which power of the enterprise head of the three powers which of the powers does this fall within and if you have the answer right your answer should be management power we saw the management power of the enterprise head so it falls within the management power of the enterprise head and then our third question says state to we disciplinary sanctions the enterprise head can inflict on a worker for gross misconduct. We saw the various disciplinary sanctions that can be inflicted on a worker by the enterprise head. Here you are expected to state three of them. Your answer, the first one is supposed to be suspension or suspend the worker for some working days with, with loss of wages. We saw suspension, we even saw the conditions for suspension. And then the next one says what? Blame or written warning. And then the next one says a verbal warning. So it, the warning can be written or it can be verbal. And then we saw termination of the contract of employment as one of the disciplinary measures that can be used by the enterprise head. And then we saw dismissal as one of the measures or disciplinary measures that can be used by the enterprise head. And by dismissal here, it is being accompanied with loss of benefits if the situation is quite serious and then we have reduction of rank that's the last one we have reduction of rank or demotion so those are being applied de depending on the severity of the misconduct now our fourth question expects us to state any three examples of regulatory powers the head of enterprise can have we saw the the regulatory powers of the head of the enterprise and of course the law that is governing the regulatory powers we are expected to state any three examples of regulatory powers the head of the enterprise can have and we say this has to do with the internal rules and regulations of the company and we said it can it can be it can be done through signing a register on arrival and exit of the company that's when you come to the company you sign when you came and then when leaving equally sign a logbook to show when you left and equally we have wearing of overalls at the workplace so at the workplace if it is found in the rules that you're supposed to put on an overall you're supposed to put it on and then we have cleaning rosters of course the working the working environment is supposed to be conducive and this can be achieved through 
cleanliness. So we're supposed to respect the rosters. And then we have assignment, a consolidation exercise. And having gone through the lesson, we expect you to state the law that governs the regulatory power of the enterprise head. Supposed to state the law. I underlined it when I was going through the lesson. So here we are expecting you to state that law. And then question two says define an enterprise head in your own words. We saw the definition. And here you're being expected to define it in your own words. And then that said, let's look at uh, how did we come up with this lesson. We used various documents, including advanced level law and integrated approach by Ngwa Oliver Shu. And equally, we made use of the labor code, and that's law number 97-007 of the 14th of August, 1992. And that said, we've come to the end of our lesson, and for our next lesson, we'll be looking at formation of labor contracts. Una tege minga matege nyum Una tege majang matege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne inju bia yen Ngani bana matege mut Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong Yesa kina bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne inju bia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninyane injubia yen